But you say, well, what does it mean when no man knoweth the day or the hour? Okay. Doesn't that mean that we're not going to know when it's going to happen? You know, and if it's after the tribulation, how are you going to not know that it's going to happen? Okay. Well, every word of God is important here. It says the day or the hour. It doesn't say the month or the year. Right? All right, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. That's important, right? That you don't know the day or the hour, but it doesn't say that you're not going to know the season, the time, the month, or the, even the year. Okay? <clears throat> it's interesting because, and I'm going to, you know, this is brought up in other places, but the coming of the Lord is likened unto a woman in travail, about a woman, woman giving birth. And so I'm going to show you that and kind of just explain this to you as far as how it explains this. And it's giving you that for a reason, okay? In verse Th Th Thessalonians chapter 5, note, in verse 1 here is right after we got done with the rapture passage, right? In, verse, in chapter 4. But in verse 1 it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Now that's interesting because he's not saying that you're not going to know the times and the seasons. He's just saying, I don't need to write this unto you. Very much like he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, <coughs> where he's basically saying, you know, I remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. So he's basically saying, listen, you already know this, okay? I've already told you this before. But in verse 2 there, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So here's your other verse that they're going to use. Thief in the night, thief in the night, you're not going to know. <coughs> well, let's keep reading there in verse 3. They don't ever read past that part, you know? They read the thief in the night, and then they just talk. It's just this talking, just blah, 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 you know, Jewish wedding, blah, 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 you know, Noah, you know, being in the ark for seven days, blah, 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 just nothing but just talking after saying one verse. But if you read the whole chapter, you're going to get a little different story. Now, verse 3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as... Travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Notice in verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So you know, if, if a thief in the night meant imminent return, then believers will not be, it will not be imminent for believers. Point blank. I mean, if you're going to say that thief in the night means that he can come at any moment, that means he can't, he's not coming at any moment for us. How else would you read that? Because it says he's not going to take us over as a thief. Therefore, it's not imminent for us. Now, obviously, I don't believe that's what it's saying. Like, it's imminent or anything like that. But even by their definition, it's flawed. Okay. Now, also, you know, travail upon a woman. You know, with all my kids, they give, it, they give you a due date. Right? They never give you the hour, first of all. But they usually give you a day. It's never been right. Okay. <laughs> Now, maybe it will be one time, you never know, but all that to say is that you don't really know the exact day. A lot of times they don't know the exact, you don't really know the exact day that the baby's conceived, to be honest. Even if it was like a perfect like 39 weeks kind of thing, you know, you don't really know like exactly the exact day. So they're just guesstimating in there, right? And so all that to say is that makes perfect sense when you correlate that with the coming of the Lord, when we're seeing the beginning of sorrows, we're not going to really know, right? I don't think we're going to know that we're really in it until the abomination of desolation. But at that point, when you see him standing in the temple, the great falling away, and it says, that, you know, the, the, the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, you know, who opposes himself and exalts himself above all that is called God, and he's sitting in, standing in the temple doing that, you're going to know that it's not that far away. You're going to know it's like within, you know, 75 days. <laughs> so, all that to say is you're going to know that that's happening, right? You're going to know that uh, that's going to happen within a certain amount of time. And you may not know the exact day. You may not know the exact hour. Because even with our chart, you know, like we say 75 days from the abomination desolation, right? Somewhere around there. First of all, you don't know when it's going to happen within that day. But also, you may not know exactly when that's going, like when the abomination desolation happened exactly, right? Yeah, maybe you will. But I'll say this. It says that even the sun doesn't know. Do you think there's going to be a time when he's going to know? Right? I mean, there's going to be a time when you're going to know. Why does it say, you know, then lift up your, 
your heads, or you know, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw at night. There's going to be a point where you're going to be like, all right, it's coming now, you know, because you're in it, okay? But right now, you definitely don't know the day or the hour. That's why date setting is wrong. It's just not, it, you know, you're never going to be right with that. Even, even, when, even if the abomination of desolation happened, I'd still be like, well, you know, it's probably around 70 days or so, somewhere around there. And so uh, at that point, you may be in the woods anyway. You don't have a watch on you. You're probably not going to know what day it even is, okay? But all that to say is that that just throws out the window. Those two things, you know, the no man know the day or the hour and, and, and all that, it's not going to really... Uh, it doesn't hold water when you look at Matthew 24 in context. It doesn't hold water when you look at the actual passage where the thief in the night is mentioned. And the other place where a thief in the night is mentioned is in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. So you can see that. It's interesting because even in, in Revelation chapter 3, it talks about <coughs> how unless you watch, I'm going to come upon you in a thief and you're not going to know the hour in which I come upon you. Just, you just turn there for a second, because that, what's interesting about this is that he's rebuking them that he's going to come upon them as a thief, okay? But yet, we're supposed to believe that that's like a, a blessing, you know what I mean? Like, like, the fact that he's coming at any moment, like, we're, we're loving that, you know? Like, we're, gonna, we're not going to know when he's going to come, you know, and all this stuff. Yet, it's a rebuke, actually, in the Bible, if he came upon you as a thief. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> when it talks about being ready, we're spiritually ready, Right? but your flesh may not be ready, and that's why it says to watch and wait, okay? Because you've you got to keep your flesh in check, and that's something you have to keep doing. So, <clears throat> you know, you could, you could end up getting killed, or, you know, like you're not ready for the tribulation and all this stuff because you're not living for God and you're not doing what you be, should be doing. But in Revelation chapter 3, it says this in verse 2, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If, thou, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Isn't that interesting that, you know, that the whole thing is like we don't know the day or the hour? And he's coming as a thief, and they're using that like as a promise to us that like he's coming at any moment. Yet it's a rebuke, actually. It's a rebuke if you don't know what hour he's coming upon, coming, coming to you, and it's a rebuke if he comes upon you as a thief. And so he's coming on the unsaved as a thief. Let's just be honest. But if you're not ready and you're you're you know you're not watching and waiting in the flesh, then that day's gonna come upon you unaware, and you're gonna end up falling with the wicked, right? It's kind of like the simple that. Uh, goes on and falls. You know, you need to be wise in those times. 